And now, from the day of their arising or, as they say, from the day of their birth, these three-brained beings are accustomed by their producers, or, as they say, their parents, to an entirely contrary impulse, namely, deceit. To teach and influence their children how to be insincere with others and deceitful and everything has become so ingrained in the beings of the planet Earth of the present time that they even consider this their duty toward their children, and they describe this conduct by the famous word, education. They educate their children never to be able and never to dare to do as conscience present in them instinctively directs, but only to do what is prescribed in the manuals of Von Tun, usually compiled by various candidate Hasnamuses. And of course by the time these children grow up and become responsible beings, they already manifest themselves and act automatically just as they were taught during their formation, just as was suggested to them, and just as they were, wound up, in short, just as they were, educated, thanks to all this, the conscience that might be in the consciousness of the beings of that planet is, from their earliest infancy, gradually driven back within, so that by the time they are grown up this conscience is found only in what they call their, subconscious, single quote, and the functioning of the aforementioned data for engendering in their presence this divine impulse of conscience gradually ceased long ago to participate in that consciousness under the direction of which their waking existence flows. That is why, my boy, the crystallization in their common presence of the divine manifestation issuing from above, Forming the data for the arising of this sacred being impulse, takes place only in their subconscious, which has ceased to participate in the process of their ordinary daily existence. So that these data have escaped the degeneration undergone by all the other sacred being impulses that they also ought to have in their presence, namely, the impulses of faith, hope, and love. Furthermore if, for some reason or other, the action of the divine data crystallized in their presence for this being impulse begins to manifest itself in certain of them from their subconscious, and strives to participate in the functioning of their abnormally formed, ordinary consciousness, then no sooner are they aware of this than they at once take all sorts of measures to avoid it, because in the conditions now prevailing there it has become impossible for anyone to exist with the functioning in his presence of this divine impulse of genuine objective conscience. Ever since, egoism, became firmly implanted in the presence of your favorites, this unique being property became, in its turn, the main contributing factor for the gradual crystallization in their general psyche of the data for the arising of several other exceptionally peculiar being impulses, now existing there under the names of, cunning, envy, hate, hypocrisy, contempt, haughtiness, servility, slyness, ambition, duplicity, and so on and so forth. These exceptionally peculiar properties of their psyche which I have just name, utterly unbecoming to three brain beings, were already fully crystallized in the presence of most of your favorites, and had become the inevitable attributes of the psyche of every one of them long before the period of the very saintly Ashiata Shemash. But when the new forms of existence, intentionally created by Ashiata Shemash himself, 
began to be fixed and to flow automatically in the process of their being existence, these strange psychic properties entirely disappeared from the presence of most of the three brain beings there later. However, when they themselves destroyed all the results of the very saintly labors of this essence loving Ashiata Shimash. These same maleficent psychic properties gradually arose again in all of them and, in the contemporary three brain beings there, they are the foundation of the whole of their essence. And so, my boy, when the data arose in the common presence of your favorites for engendering this peculiar being impulse of egoism, this unique property, evolving gradually and giving rise to factors for other, also peculiar, but secondary being impulses, took the place of a unique all autocratic ruler in their general organization, and then, not only every manifestation of that divine being impulse of conscience but even the faintest stirring of that impulse became a hindrance to the actions of this all autocratic ruler and later, when your favorites felt obliged, consciously or unconsciously, always and in everything, to prevent the sacred impulse from taking part in the functioning of that consciousness under the control of which it had become proper for them to pass their waking existence, the action of those divine data was gradually, as it were, diverted, from the functioning of their ordinary consciousness and participated only in the functioning of their, subconscious. And it was only after my detailed research and investigations had made all this clear to me, that I understood why there arose and still exists the division of themselves into various, classes, or, castes, which has such maleficent consequences for them. Later detailed investigations also showed me very definitely and clearly that in that consciousness which they call the subconscious, even in the beings of the present time the data for the acquisition and their presence of this fundamental divine impulse of conscience do indeed continue to be crystallized and hence to be present during the whole of their existence. The fact that these data for the divine being impulse are still crystallized and that their manifestations continue to participate in the process of their being existence was further confirmed, apart from the aforesaid investigations, by the difficulty I frequently had on account of it during my observations of them from the planet Mars. The point is that, although I could freely observe the existence proceeding on the surface of the other planets of that solar system through my Tesquano on the planet Mars without any difficulty whatsoever, my observations of the process of existence of your favorites was at times a real misery, owing to the special coloration of the atmosphere of the planet Earth. And this special coloration occurred, as I later ascertained, because from time to time there appear in the presence of this atmosphere large quantities of those crystallizations which are frequently radiated from the presence of these favorites of yours when they are moved by the particular inner impulse which they call, remorse of conscience. Single quote. And this is because, when they happen to receive and experience some kind of moral shock, the associations proceeding in them from impressions previously perceived, associations that consist mainly, as I have already told you, of various kinds of rubbish, almost always become changed, calm, and even for a time entirely cease. In consequence, there automatically takes place in the common presence of these three brain beings there a combination of functioning that frees the data present in their 
subconscious, for the manifestation of the divine impulse of objective conscience and temporarily allows it to participate in the functioning of their ordinary consciousness, with the result that this, remorse of conscience, begins to proceed in them and this, remorse of conscience, thus produced in your favorites gives rise to those particular cries. Colonizations I have mentioned, which issue from them mixed with other radiations, and it is the totality of these radiations that gives the atmosphere of your planet that special coloration which hinders the being function of sight from penetrating freely through it. Here it is necessary to say that these favorites of yours, particularly the contemporary ones, have become experts in preventing this inner impulse of theirs called remorse of conscience from lingering long in their common presence. No sooner did they begin to sense a twinge or even the slightest prick of the arising of the functioning in them of this being impulse than they immediately squash it, whereupon this impulse, not yet quite formed in them, promptly subsides. Fur, squashing, the first stirring of any remorse of conscience in themselves, they have even invented some very effective special means which now exist there under the names of alcoholism, cocaineism, morphinism, nicotinism, onanism, monkism, athenianism, and others with names also ending in ism. Single quote. Sometime later, my boy, on a suitable occasion, I shall also tell you in detail, as I promised, about those results of the abnormally established conditions of ordinary existence there that become factors for the arising and perpetuating of this maleficent assignment of each other to various castes. I will without fail explain this to you, because the information about this abnormality may serve as very good data for a better understanding of the strangeness of the psyche of these three brain beings who please you. Meanwhile listen attentively and try to assimilate the following when the particular psychic property of egoism had been completely formed in the common presence of these favorites of yours and had given rise, as it still continues to do, to various secondary impulses of which I have told you, and furthermore, when the impulse of sacred conscience had entirely ceased to take part in their waking consciousness, these three brain beings arising and existing on the planet Earth, both before and after the period of the very saintly activities of Ashiata Shemash, have always striven to organize their welfare during the process of their ordinary existence exclusively for them themselves. And as in general there never is, nor can there be on any of the planets of our great universe enough of everything required for the equal external welfare of everyone, irrespective of what are called objective merits, the result is that the prosperity of some is always built on the adversity of others. It is this exclusive regard for their own personal welfare that has gradually crystallized in their psyche the quite peculiar and unprecedented properties I cited such as cunning, contempt, hate, servility, lying, flattery, and so on, which, on the one hand, are factors for outer manifestations unbecoming to three brain beings, and on the other are causes of the gradual destruction of all those inner possibilities, placed in them by great nature, of becoming particles of the whole of the reasonable whole.
Well then, my boy, when the results of the very saintly labors of the essence-loving Ashiata Shimash had begun to blend with the processes of both their inner and outer being existence, and when thanks to this the data for the divine impulse of conscience, surviving in their subconscious, shared more and more in the functioning of their waking consciousness, then their being existence, both personal and in their relations with others, began to proceed on this planet almost as it does on the other planets of our great universe on which three brain beings exist. These favorites of yours then began to behave toward one another as toward the manifestations, differing only in degree of a unique common creator and showed respect for one another only according to the merits personally attained by means of being part of duty that is by means of personal conscious labor and intentional suffering that is why during that period there ceased to exist those two chief maleficent forms of their ordinary existence namely their division into separate independent communities and the division of themselves within these communities into different castes or classes at that time also all the three brain beings on your planet began to consider themselves and to consider those like them simply as beings bearing in themselves particles of the emanations of the sorrow of our common father creator And all this came about because, when the action of the data for the divine being impulse was participating in the functioning of their ordinary waking consciousness, and the three brain beings began behaving toward one another solely in accordance with conscience, the consequence was that masters ceased to deprive their slaves of freedom, and power-possessing beings of their own accord relinquished their unmerited rights, having realized and felt by conscience that they exercised these rights and occupied these positions not for the common welfare but only for the satisfaction of their various personal weaknesses, such as, vanity, self-love, self-calming, and so on. Of course, at that period there also continued to be all kinds of chiefs, directors, and specialist advisors, but just as on all planets of the universe inhabited by three brain beings of varying degrees of self-perfecting, they occupied these positions chiefly from difference of age and from what is called essence power, instead of true hereditary right or by election, as was the case both before and after this blissful Ashiatan epoch and is the case today. All these chiefs, directors, and advisors then became such of themselves, in the lawful course of events, in accordance with the objective merits they personally acquired, which could be sensed as real by all the beings around them. And this took place as follows. All the beings of that planet then began to work in order to have in their consciousness this divine function of genuine conscience, and for this purpose, as everywhere in the universe, they transubstantiated in themselves what are called the being of Lagonian strivings of which there are five, namely, the first striving to have in one's ordinary being existence everything satisfying and really necessary for the planetary body. The second striving to have a constant and unflagging instinctive need to perfect oneself in the sense of being. The third the conscious striving to know ever more and more about the laws of world creation and world maintenance. The fourth the striving, from the beginning of one's existence, to pay as quickly as possible for one's arising and individuality, in order afterward to be free to lighten as much as possible the sorrow of our common father. 
and the fifth is striving always to assist the most rapid perfecting of other beings, both those similar to oneself and those of other forms, up to the degree of the sacred, Mark Bodhi, that is, up to the degree of self-individuality. During this period, when every terrestrial pre-centered being existed and worked consciously upon himself in accordance with these five strivings, many of them, thanks to this, soon reached objective attainments perceptible to others. The objective attainments of these beings of course attracted the attention of all those around them, who there upon made those who had attained these merits stand out from their midst and paid them every kind of respect, joyfully trying to merit the attention of these outstanding beings and to receive their indications and counsel as to how they likewise could perfect themselves. These outstanding beings, in their turn, then began to make the one with the highest attainments among themselves stand out, and this outstanding being, without hereditary or other right, automatically became the chief of them all and corresponding to his recognition as chief, his directions were widely circulated not only on neighboring parts of the surface of your planet but also on other continents and islands. period the counsel and guidance and, in general, every word of these chiefs became sacred law for all the three brain beings there, and were followed with devotion and joy, contrary to what had preceded there before the results obtained by the very saintly labors of Ashiata Shemash, and to what again took place after they themselves had destroyed the fruits of these labors. That is to say, these strange favorites of yours now carry out the various commands and injunctions of their chiefs and, as they call them, kings, only from fear of what are called, bayonets, and, lousy cells, of which there are a great many at the disposal of these chiefs and kings. The results of the very saintly labors of Ashiata Shemash also had definite repercussions on that terrible manifestation peculiar to the psyche of your favorites, namely, their, irresistible urge periodically to destroy each other's existence. The process of reciprocal destruction established there, ensuing from that terrible particularity of their psyche, entirely ceased on the continent of Asia, and took place only occasionally on those large and small territories of that planet of yours that were far away from this continent and where, because of a great distance, the influence of the initiates and priests could not reach and be transubstantiated in the presence of the beings breathing on these parts of the surface of your planet. But the most astonishing and significant result of the very saintly labors of Ashiata Shemash was that at that period not only did the duration of the existence of these unfortunates become a little more normal, that is to say, it began to increase, while what they called it, death rate, fell, but at the same time the number of results for the continuation of their species diminished, that is, their, birth rate, as they say, also fell by at least a fifth. Thereby there was practically demonstrated one of the cosmic laws called the law of the equilibration of vibrations, that is, vibrations arising from the evolution and involution of the cosmic substances required for the most great omnicosmic Togoatogokrat. This decline in both their death rate and birth rate came about because, as their existence became approximately normal for three centered beings, they also began to radiate from themselves vibrations corresponding more closely to the requirements of great nature, 
thanks to which, nature had less need of those vibrations that are obtained from the destruction of the existence of beings. You will also fully understand this cosmic law of the equilibration of vibrations when at the proper time I explain to you in detail, as I have so often promised, all the fundamental cosmic laws. It was just in this way, my boy, and in this sequence, that there was gradually created, thanks to the conscious labors of the very saintly Ashiata Shemash, a welfare unprecedented for your favorites, but to the infinite sorrow of all more or less consciously thinking individuals of all gradations of reason, shortly after the departure from this planet of the very saintly Ashiata Shemash, these unfortunates themselves, as had become proper to them with, regard to every good attainment of their ancestors, totally destroyed it all, and thus it was they destroyed and swept away from the face of their planet all that beneficence, so that even the rumor has failed to reach contemporary beings that once upon a time such bliss existed. Certain inscriptions, however, which have survived from ancient times and have reached contemporary beings, contain some information that there once existed on their planet a special kind of state organization, at the head of which were beings of the highest attainments. And on the basis of this information, the contemporary beings have merely invented a name for this state organization, they call it a priest state, and let it go at that. But what this priest state was, and why it existed is it not all the same to contemporary beings of the planet Earth what ancient savages did. Chapter 28 The chief culprit in the destruction of all the very saintly labors of Ashiata Shemash. You remember, my boy, I have already told you that the learned beings, then assembled in the city of Babylon from almost the whole surface of the earth were not primarily to blame for the rising of the factors that caused the final destruction of the surviving beneficent results of the conscious labors of the very saintly Ashiata Shemash for later generations of your favorites, but as had long before become proper to most of the terrestrial, learned beings of new formation, they were merely, like, contagious bacilli, the unconscious disseminators of every kind of already existing evil among their own and subsequent generations. The basis of all the great and small maleficent activities of those, learned, beings and of all their unconscious harmful manifestations leading to the destruction of the last remnants of the results, so beneficent for the three brain beings there, of the very saintly conscious labors of the essence-loving Ashiata Shemash was, as my further detailed research on his saintly activities showed me, the invention of a learned being, well known in his day, who was also a learned being of new formation, named Lentrohamsanan. Thanks to the double center of gravity of his inner existence, the highest being part of the presence of this terrestrial free brain being was coded and perfected up to the required gradation of objective reason, and later this highest being part became, as I once told you, one of those 313 feet highest being bodies, who are called eternal Hasnamus individuals and who have the place of their further existence in the universe on a small planet named eternal retribution. Strictly speaking, as regards this terrestrial free brain being Lentrohamsanan, I should now have to keep my promise and explain to you fully the expression 
Hasnamas, but I prefer to do so a little later at the proper place in the flow of my tail. The Maleficent, Invention, or, as contemporary terrestrial learned beings of new formation would say, he, composition, or even the, creation, of that learned being was actualized, as I have already told you, at least two centuries before the time when during my fifth sojourn I first visited the city of Babylon, where learned beings were assembled, partly by coercion and partly voluntarily, from almost the whole surface of the planet. This